<clears throat> Good afternoon, dear students. Uh, this is the animal welfare lecture uh, originally uh, designed uh, to the 5th, 4th uh, and 5th of May. But uh, uh, you can uh, you receive uh, uh, just now. Uh, the today's topic is the history of animal protection and uh, at the end uh, because this is uh, a, a highly uh, important and discussed <coughs> topic that uh, are we right to use animals for uh, uh, animal experimentation uh, to study uh, human diseases i will give uh, you answer to this question at the end of this lecture lecture uh, we will give some uh, answer to the uh, extreme animal protection uh, protectionist to today who are uh, to the absolute uh, prohibition of animal experimentation. So the question is, are we right to use animals as a model for human diseases? Uh, I uh, recall, I revise what you have heard uh, the, during uh, the lecture about the uh, uh, laboratory animals and experimentation. Uh, an animal model uh, can be characterized by two, uh, uh, ca uh, two characteristics. Uh, this is the fidelity and the discriminative force. Fidelity means that it is similar to the human. High fidelity are the laboratory mouse and the rat. Low, especially the transgenic strains and lines. Low fidelity, but high discrimination can be uh, achieved by using nine-banded armadillo, Dasipus novemcintus, and even uh, using non-mammalian models. Uh, and in the following, I will show you some uh, shocking, uh, striking example that we need uh, the animals in the uh, research to be able to cure uh, human diseases. For this, we will see the example of uh, example of uh, uh, leprosy, atherosclerosis, immune deprived animals, slug, mucosal test, and the naked mole. Animal models used in studying human and animal diseases can be classified in four groups. The first is the spontaneous animal models, for example, the watanable, heritable, hyperlipemic rabbit, as a model for familiar hyperlipidemia in man, or the nude, nude mice for uh, a series of human diseases. We have the induced animal models, included the transgenic animals, uh, and we have the immune-deprived, uh, severe combined immune deficiency mouse uh, for the study of the human HIV uh, uh, problems. Uh, less important but important are the negative models uh, when the, some animal species is, are resistant against some uh, uh, pathogen agent, uh, like the goat uh, against the swine fever virus or the dog against the Ebola. In this way, we can study uh, the mechanism of the resistance. And the last uh, group is the orphan animal models, which has no uh, counterpartner human disease, like the Marex disease, as a lymphoproliferative agent. But knowing the character of the viruses, uh, many times can occur a mutation, and some uh, human disease can be similar to 
this model. Now uh, let's see the uh, examples uh, for uh, human diseases. The first disease is the leprosy. This is okay. Some uh, about the nine-banded armadillo, or Dasypus novencinctus. Uh, this is uh, a very uh, well-known medium-sized mammal found in North, Central, and South of America. Uh, this is a solitary, mainly nocturnal animal, uh, which can find habitats from rainforest to grassland. It is an insectivore, uh, feeding ants, termites, and small invertebrates. Okay, uh, and uh, what about uh, the physiological and uh, anatomical characteristics uh, of the armadillo? Uh, this is uh, uh, generally uh, between uh, 2 and 6 kilograms of body weight. Uh, the head and the body length is uh, between 30 to 60 centimeters. They stand 15 uh, 25 centimeter. The outer shell is composed of ossified dermal scutes covered by non overlapping keratinized epidermal scale, uh, scales which are connected by flexible bands of skin. This armor covers the back, sides, head, tail and also the outside surfaces of the legs. The underside of the body and the inner surfaces of the legs have no armored protection. Uh, okay, uh, the nine uh, is a typical number of bands, but uh, the actual number varies by geographic range. The armadillos possess the teeth typical of all sloths and ant eaters. The teeth are all small peg like molars with open roots and no enamel. Incisors do form in the embryos but quickly degenerate and are usually absent at birth. And how they reproduce this is also uh, very uh, uh, typical. The mating takes place during the two or three months long mating season. A single egg is fertilized, but implantation may be delayed for three to four months to ensure the young will not be born during an unfavorable time. Once the zygote does implant in the uterus, a gestation period of four months occurs, during which the zygote splits into four identical embryos uh, attached by a common placenta. After birth, the quadruples remain in the burrow, living off the mother's milk for about three months. So they leave in the nest. They then begin to forage with the mother eventually living after six months of the year. And what they are eating? They are eating uh, insects. They are insectivores. This is the original uh, digestive type of mammals. They forage for meals uh, by snouting on the soil. And uh, uh, they lap up the insects with their sticky tongue. The supplement uh, beside the ants uh, the, to their diets are amphibians and small reptiles uh, and occasionally bird eggs and baby mammals. Carrion is also eaten, although per perhaps uh, uh, only 
uh, in famine. Okay, and uh, finally about the behavior that the nine banded armadillos are solitary nocturnal animals. Uh, they come out to forage around dusk. They are extensive burrower with a single animal sometimes maintaining up to 12 burrows on its uh, range. And they can mark their territory with urine, feces and excretions from scent glands found under uh, uh, nose, eyelids and feet. I refer to the section uh, in the stress, uh, the olfactory uh, uh, perception and the pheromones. Males hold breeding territories and may become aggressive in order to keep other males out of their home range to increase chances of pairing with females. Okay, and now we go to the medical uh, research. How can you apply the nine banded armadillo in the research? Fortunately, the nine banded armadillo, the Dasipus uh, uh, novencinctus, is an appropriate model for that. Even, uh, unfortunately, it is a carrier of the Mycobacterium leprae in uh, uh, America. But you see that uh, this animal, this small animal, shows uh, similar uh, uh, skin problems uh, on the uh, sole, uh, similar to the human. Uh, they have similar uh, problem with the heart functioning and uh, uh, all the inner uh, organs uh, reaction is similar. So we can develop the treatment and we can uh, see how the, uh, the disease can be treated. Here you can uh, see a uh, background literature. Of course, you don't have to read this whole article, but I wanted to uh, show you that this is absolutely brand new and uh, modern, that the armadillo uh, is a model for the neuropathy of leprosy and potentially other neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, okay, the, the second example is the atherosclerosis and the rabbit. Uh, atherosclerosis is uh, produced by a cholesterol crystals, uh, left side, you can see the microscopic picture of the cholesterol uh, uh, crystals in the blood. And right side you see the vatanable, heritable, hyperlipemic rabbit. Rabbit uh, has uh, uh, basically uh, no high cholesterol level, only in the fraction of the uh, beneficial cholesterol, cholesterol. But this mutation, uh, uh, owing to this mutation, lost uh, the cholesterol receptors and developed a very high uh, uh, level of cholesterol and fat in the brain. And uh, the same uh, uh, disease uh, you can see here what's happening uh, during the human atherosclerosis, that the cholesterol crystal will produce a so-called plaque uh, in the intima of the blood vessels, and the final stage will be a, a stroke or a heart infarct. Uh, right side, you see a, a heart uh, muscle uh, problem with the infarct. So this is a spontaneous animal model uh, help. Uh, today uh, there is an uh, extended uh, version of this uh, model. Uh, there is a sub-line where the animals develop not only this atherosclerosis, 
but also myocardial infarct. Okay, the okay. Uh, this is also a very important uh, model in research of human diseases, the so-called nude mouse. Uh, the nude mouse is a laboratory mouse from a strain with a genetic mutation that causes a deteriorated or absent thymus, resulting in an inhibited immune system due to a greatly reduced number of T cells. The phenotype, main outward appearance of the mouse, is a lack of body hair, which gives it the nude nickname. But the genetic uh, abbreviation is NU per NU. The nude mouse is available to research because it can receive many different types of tissue and tumor grafts as it mounts no rejection response. The xenografts are commonly used in research to test new methods of imaging and treating tumors. The genetic basis of the nude mouse mutation is a disruption in the uh, FOXN1 gene. The code is albino. The NU allele on chromosome 11 is an autosomal recessive mutation, spontaneous, of course. Dysfunctional rudimentary thymus phenotypically hairless or sometimes sparse intermittent hair growth uh, is characteristics. Uh, as I've mentioned, it is T-cell deficient, but the B-cell's function is normal. No generation of cytotoxic effector cells and uh, because the lack of thymus, nude mice, cannot generate the major T lymphocytes and therefore uh, they are unable to mount many types of adaptive immune responses uh, uh, as follows. Okay, they uh, cannot form antibody formation that require uh, CD4 plus helper T cells. Second, cell-mediated immune responses, which require uh, also CD4 and CD8 uh, plus T cells. You know that the CD is the abbreviation for the class division for some T cells. They have also not possibility for delayed type of hypersensitivity responses, and they cannot kill virus infected or malignant cells and finally as I've mentioned they are not able to graft rejection. Because of the above features nude mice have served in the laboratory to gain insight into the immune system of human, into the mechanism of leukemia, solid tumors, even AIDS and other forms of immune deficiency. Moreover, the absence of functioning T cells prevents nude mice from rejecting not only allografts, but they cannot even reject xenografts, that is, grafts of tissue from another uh, species. But we have uh, another uh, immune deprived uh, uh, mouse strains, for example, uh, the well known uh, RAG 1 and 2. Uh, this is the abbreviation to recombination activating gene, uh, which is basically a protein uh, that in human is encoded by this. Uh, uh, RAG1 and 2 gene. And uh, defects in this gene can cause several different diseases. And the clinical significance uh, uh, in the human medicine is 
that because of these effects, the reg1 deletion is used in mouse models of disease to impair T cell and B cell development and uh, uh, functionally deletes major T cells and B cells from the immune system. In human humans, Reg deficiency was first recognized as a form of immune dysregulation known as Omin syndrome. Omin syndrome. Yes, and uh, to finish with the immune deprived animals, uh, we have the SID mouse, the severe combined immunodeficient mice. Mice with the severe combined immunodeficiency are often used in the research of human disease. Human immune cells are used to develop human lymphoid organs within these immunodeficient mice, and many different types of SID mouse models have been developed. These mice allow researchers to study the human immune system and human disease in small animal models. So, by this way, uh, stid mice can serve many functions uh, in research, particularly in the study of human physiology and diseases. Uh, stid mice and HIV. Immune-compromised mice have become of particular interest for studying the human immunodeficiency virus, how it interacts with the host in human lymphoid organs, as well as how treatments work in vivo. And uh, we have also the non sid mouse, uh, in these mice can be transplanted with human fetal liver, bone, thymus, and lymphoid cells from blood transplants, leading to the formation of human immune cells, such as B and T cells, within the mice. These mice are then infected with the virus, and researchers are able to study how HIV attacks the human lymphocytes and causes acquired immunodeficiency syndrome AIDS over time. Furthermore, these so-called humanized mouse models can also be used to test potential therapies for this disease, including gene-based therapies. And now we will move to a, a non uh, vertebrate model uh, to the slug. Here you can see slug. Uh, this is not uh, uh, my favorite animal in the garden, but uh, uh, this animal can serve uh, as a replacement, uh, replacement uh, to uh, test the irritative effect of creams and eye drops. And please don't think uh, simply about cosmetics, but you have to think about uh, uh, the medicinal uh, use of creams and eye drops. Uh, before this test, uh, uh, all over the world, the cruel Trace test was used. This is the eye irritation of uh, uh, the rabbit and also uh, skin irritation test in the rabbit and guinea pig. Uh, but these are cruel and very painful with uh, pain and suffering to the uh, mammals. Instead, a series of uh, in vitro method have being developed to replace the uh, in vivo irritation tests, uh, like the uh, uh, hen chorion allantoin membrane test, like the uh, 
different uh, cell culture, human cell, cornea cell culture uh, test. But you know that these tests uh, may uh, make a positive uh, false result. And the second, that uh, uh, one test is not sufficient. So instead, uh, there is an uh, approach to use a lower and less sensitive animal, uh, the slug. Uh, if you put uh, the slug in a petri dish and you uh, apply the test material on the animal, uh, they will release body fluids. And the amount of the body fluid is in uh, close correlation with the irritation effect. Uh, by this way, simply by weighing uh, the released body fluid after removing the uh, slug, uh, we can uh, have an idea about the irritation uh, caused uh, by the test compound. Uh, many people are for because it is more uh, sensitive uh, and uh, accurate uh, than the cell cultures, but uh, at the same time this is also an animal. Okay, and now we have to go to the next uh, model, the naked mole. And here we see the naked mole or the naked mole rat. The naked mole rat, or Heterocephalus glaber, uh, is known as the sand puppy too, is a burrowing rodent native to parts of East Africa. It is closely related uh, uh, to other uh, small rodents there, and uh, uh, the naked mole uh, are the only known EU social mammals, the highest classification of sociality. It is highly unusual set of physical traits that allow it to thrive in a harsh underground environment and is the only mammalian thermoconformer almost entirely ectothermic or so-called like cold-blooded in how it regulates the body temperature. Uh, in the later you will also see that the naked mole rat lacks uh, high pain sensitivity in skin, no pea substance, and has very low metabolic and respiratory uh, rates. Uh, the naked mole rat is also remarkable for its longevity and its resistance to cancer and also to oxygen deprivation. The typical individual are 8 to 10 centimeter long and weigh 30 to 35 grams with the exception of uh, the queens. Uh, later you will uh, receive more about the queen. Uh, the metabolism is uh, very typical. Uh, they are well adapted to the limited availability of oxygen within the tunnels of its typical habitat. It has underdeveloped lungs and its hemoglobin has a high affinity for oxygen, increasing the efficacy of oxygen uptake. It has a very low respiration and metabolic rate for an animal of its body size, about 70% of that of the common mice, thus using oxygen minimally. In response to long periods of hunger, its metabolic rate can be reduced by uh, to 25%. Uh, what about the pain sensitivity, or better say, insensitivity? The skin of naked mole rats lacks 
uh, neurotransmitter P substance in their cutaneous sensory fibers. As a result, the naked mole rats feel less pain when they are exposed to acid or capsaicin from paprika. When they are injected with substance P, a uh, type of neurotransmitter, uh, the pain signaling works as it does in any other mammals, but only with capsaicin and not with acids. This is proposed to be an adaptation to the animal living in high levels of carbon dioxide due to poorly ventilated living spaces which could cause acid to build up in their body tissues. Naked Moret's substance P deficiency has also been tied to their lack of the histamine-induced itching and cratching behavior typical of rodents. And something about the cancer resistance before uh, uh, moving to the queen. The naked mole rats have a high resistance to tumors, although it is likely that they are not entirely immune to related disorders. A potential mechanism that averts cancer is an overcrowding gene the P16, which prevents cell division once individual cells come into contact, known also as contact inhibition. The cells of most mammals, including naked morads, undergo contact inhibition via the gene P27, which prevents cellular reproduction at a much higher cell density than P16 does. The combination of P16 and P27 in naked morad cells is a double barrier to uncontrolled cell proliferation, one of the hallmarks of the cancer. Its longevity is uh, uh, extraordinary. The naked mole rat is also of interest because of its extraordinary long-lived for a rodent of a size uh, of a uh, big mouse and uh, can go up to 32 years and holds the records for the longest living rodent. The mortality rate of the species does not increase with the age and thus does not conform to that of most mammals, as frequently defined uh, as a law of mortality by Gompertz and Makehem, uh, more spontaneous tumor, for example, and uh, uh, decrease of the flexibility of the vessels and uh, degeneration of the uh, neurons. Naked mole rats are highly resistant to cancer, and this is part of the longevity, and can maintain healthy vascular function longer in their lifespan than shorter living rats. The reason for their longevity is debated, but is thought to be related to their ability to substantially reduce their metabolism during uh, hard times and so prevent aging-induced damage from oxidative uh, stress, stress caused by the free radicals. This has been referred to as living their life in pulses. Their longevity has also been attributed to protein stability. Because of their very long lifespan, an international effort was made to uh, place the sequence of the genome of the naked mole rat uh, in the science. A draft genome was available from uh, 2012 with an improved version, uh, 2015. Its somatic number is 2n equal to 60. Uh, 
Further transcriptome sequences revealed the genes related to mitochondria and oxidation reduction processes. The DNA repair transcriptome of their liver of humans, naked morets and mice, were compared. The maximum lifespans of humans, naked morets and mice are respectively approximately 120, 30 and 3 years. The longer-lived species, humans and naked morets, expressed DNA repair genes. And after uh, uh, that, it is interesting to know that uh, uh, several DNA repair pathways in humans and naked morets were upregulated compared with the mice. Uh, uh, according to those findings, we can uh, tell that, uh, say, and uh, confirm that increased DNA repair facilities, greater longevity, and also are consistent with the DNA damage theory of the aging. And now we can move uh, to the characteristics of the social life and the queen. Queen. Uh, the queen can achieve, here you can see a queen, achieve uh, uh, 80 gram of body weight. Uh, very typical for their life, they are living in Africa underground. Uh, the so-called EU sociality. Uh, it means that they form a big family, like the uh, bees, honeybees, with a queen and workers and uh, fighters, so the spe specialization of uh, the uh, uh, different functions. Uh, beside the queen, uh, we have some, some males as a mating partners. Uh, they are very interesting animals because uh, they are small, like a small rodent, but they have a long life span. They can live up to 20 years. Uh, they are uh, resistant to the development of the cancer, and their pain feeling is very small. They have no pay substance in the skin. So uh, we have, can see that how they are living underground and they use the underground tubes also for the uh, adaptation to the uh, temp environmental temperature because uh, if uh, uh, in the sunshine is up, they are going to the lower uh, uh, tubes and uh, in the night they can go up. Uh, what is uh, the physiological uh, uh, characteristics which made uh, the animal apt uh, for model? Uh, we can study the aging process, how can uh, prolong the lifetime. Second, we can study how their cells inhibit the formation of a tumor uh, because they uh, don't uh, uh, get into close contact uh, to each other. And we can also study the, uh, study the pain feeling. So these were the most important examples of the uh, of the uh, animal models, but uh, uh, to be uh, absolutely uh, uh, up to date, I wanted to uh, cite for you uh, from the Nature, Volume Five Hundred Seventy Nine published March 12, uh, 2020, page 183. 
and uh, the citation is that monkeys and mice enlisted to fight coronavirus. Animal models can reveal how infections develop and aid drug and vaccine efforts. Uh, in the picture, uh, they show rhesus macaque are used to study the virus by even Calaway, with no sign that the coronavirus is going away, researchers are looking to animals to understand COVID-19. They are testing monkeys, mice, and even ferrets to answer key questions about the disease and to fast-track potential drugs and vaccines for clinical trials. Teams in China have reported initial findings from studies in which they infected monkeys and mice engineered to be susceptible to infection by the coronavirus called SARS-CoV-2. And a team at the Australian Animal Health Laboratory in Gijilong is studying the infection in ferrets before testing potential vaccines. Ferrets are a popular model for respiratory infections because their lung physiology is similar to humans. But no animal model is perfect. There is going to be a need not just for one animal model, but multiple, says David O'Connor, a virologist of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Mild illness. O'Connor and fellow University of Wisconsin virologist Thomas Friedrich are part of the network of about 60 scientists who are sharing details of their efforts to study the infection in primates and other animals. They were excited to read about experiments in non-human primates infected with COVID-19 reported in preprint in 27 February, uh, Shen and Coworker. Uh, that research led by virologist Chao Shan at the Chinese Academy of Sciences Wuhan Institute of Virology found that rhesus macaque infected with the coronavirus had a fairly mild illness. None developed fevers, but x-rays of their lungs showed signs of pneumonia similar to those in humans with COVID-19. The researchers also monitored two animals for three weeks. These monkeys lost weight but didn't have other serious symptoms. The fact that the monkeys seemed to develop symptoms similar to those in people with, with mild forms of COVID-19 is an important takeaway, says O'Connor. But to find models for severe human infections, researchers will have to look at different animals and vary experimental factors, such as the route by which the virus is administered, he adds. Many researchers are turning to lab mice to test drugs and vaccines and to investigate the nature of infection. But ordinary mice seem to be resistant to infection by SARS-CoV virus too. So researchers are hoping to use mice bread to produce a human version of the protein ACE2 which the virus uses to enter cells. One lab has already begun infecting them with coronavirus. A team of researchers in China found that like rhesus monkeys, the mice seemed to develop only mild illness, showing weight loss and sign of pneumonia, but nothing more severe. See Bao L. et al.
Quinchuan, a virologist at Peking Union Medical College in Beijing. Yes, yes, I finished uh, just a minute. Uh, in Beijing, who co-led the study, says that in unpublished work, his team also identified several drugs that slowed the virus's replication and limited the animal's weight loss. Animals that develop mild infections could be useful for testing drugs and vaccines, says Stanley Perlman, a coronavirologist at the University of Iowa in Iowa City, whose lab developed the ACE2 mouse strain. But he's thinking about developing other mice model to better mimic severe cases. Models are imperfect. We do the best we can, Perryman said. Okay, uh, uh, finishing uh, my lecture with this uh, actual topic. Uh, take care of yourself uh, and uh, uh, take uh, uh, vitamin uh, E and vitamin C in a mega dose. Uh, thank you very much for your attentions. Thanks once more for your precious attention.